Hey there, everybody. This is George from DinosaurGeorge.com, finishing up my marathon of shooting videos today. This makes, uh, I think, the eighth one I've shot today, and they're all starting to run together, and I'm starting to confuse answers with answers I gave earlier. So this is episode number 182. Um, if you go to my website, DinosaurGeorge.com, click on the Ask Dinosaur George page, fill out the form. Let me give you some advice. Don't make your questions incredibly long because they don't get read. Uh, make them kind of short and to the point. They don't have to be one question, or one line questions, but make them kind of short and to the point and you have a much better chance of having them answer. All right, uh, the highlighted item for this particular uh, episode is my Ultimate T-Rex video. It's item 1001, it retails for $8. It is, I think, about a 35 to 40 minute DVD, and it talks about everything you want to know about Tyrannosaurus Rex. It was a lot of fun making it. I enjoyed doing it. I also have a couple of other videos on my website, so you'll see a link that'll take you to our catalog. Just click on the books and DVD link and you can find this video. All right, let's get into it. Zach from Patra, Greece. Hello, Dinosaur George, how are you doing? I know you, you might get this question a lot, and you might have answered it in the past, so I'm sorry, but who would win in a fight between T-Rex and Spinosaurus on land? Again, I'm sorry for asking this question. Hope you have a nice day. Zach, there's no reason to apologize for asking a question. I know that a lot of questions that people ask have been answered several times, but I don't expect you guys to go back and watch every single, this is the, this is the 182nd Ask DG video I've made. I don't expect anybody to watch them all, and even if you did, you can't remember every single question that everybody asked. So don't apologize, Zach. There's nothing wrong with that. If a fight was on land, even if the fight was in water, I believe Tyrannosaurus overpowers Spinosaurus in every measurable way. Now, these dinosaurs did not live together, and this is simply a guess, but I believe that Spinosaurus would not have been able to ultimately withstand a fight with something as big as Tyrannosaurus Rex. All right, Cameron from Duluth, Georgia. Hello, DG. It, it's your dinosaur buddy, Cam, from Facebook. Hey, Cam! Cam! You've got a great... A uh, great future in dinosaurs, my man. Dinosaurs seem to be the thing that comes to mind when you think of paleontology. I find the animals from the Burgess Shale Formation to be fascinating. What is your opinion? I will be me uh, mentioning them in my deep time geology lecture soon. Hope this gets answered and I'm glad you're making videos again. Cam, um, I want to tell you something. I am following you on Facebook as what you're doing. Um, I see where you speak. I'm so proud of what you're doing and the young man you're becoming. I hope you keep it up. And most importantly, one of these days, Cam, um, I'm going to get you to come lecture with me and we'll do a, maybe a team lecture. You'll do one and I'll do one. But I'm very, very proud of you. All right. I'm with you, buddy. You say paleontologist. Everybody says dinosaurs. I am as intrigued with all life as I am with dinosaurs. Sea life. Permian life, mammals, reptiles, but the Burgess Shale is as close to traveling to another, uh, another planet and looking at aliens, because that is some funky looking stuff. I love the animals of the Burgess Shale. It is an incredible place. For those of you that are not familiar, the Burgess Shale comes from a formation in, in uh, Canada, right? Canada. And it has some of the earliest life there is the freakiest variety of things you will ever see. So if you like paleontology, I suggest you do some more research on, on this stuff. Um, so again, I'm with you, Cam. The Burgess Shale life is fascinating, and I'm glad to hear that you're going to do a talk on it. Good luck to you, and good luck with your future. All right, Matt from Yorktown, New York. Hi, DG. Hope you're doing well. I was wondering if there were any large theropods from, north, uh, from the northeast of the United States. I hear about plenty of large theropods from the south and the west, but nothing from around here. Thanks for taking the time to answer my questions, and I hope your museum continues to do well. Well, Matt, um, Acrocanthosaurus immediately comes to mind. He's been found from Texas to North Carolina to uh, Maryland up the entire coast. So I have no doubt that Acrocanthosaurus is one of the first big New Yorkers. Now, along with him, there were probably others, but here's the, the reason why you don't hear so much. The late Cretaceous formations, you don't have access to them on that part of the country. 
The reason why all the stuff seems to be happening from the west and from the south is because there are more areas where that formation is available for us to look. So it's more likely that we're going to find more things from there, and that's why you hear more about it. It does not mean that you didn't have the same variety of unusual life living on that side. It's just that the formations are limited to where we can look. But Acrocanthosaurus is definitely a New Yorker. All right, Carl from Honolulu, Hawaii. Hello, George. Hope you're having a good day. Here's my question. I believe Dimetrodon and Adaphosaurus were amphibians. And of course, my phone is ringing. How do you like that ringtone, everybody? I, I simply cannot take this. I'm so sorry. Sorry for the interruption. But you ought to see what happens <laughs> when my phone rings in a crowd. I think it terrifies kids. Okay, so um, you believe that Dimetrodon and Adaphosaurus were amphibians since their sails could be used to steer their way through the water. Spinosaurus was aquatic and had a sail too. What is your opinion? Well, Carl, very interesting question. Um, man, um, were they amphibians? I don't think they were amphibians because too many times they're found in environments that suggest they're living in a semi-arid environment. Amphibians don't do so well. Amphibians have got to constantly be immediately within uh, the ability to, for water. And, and these guys are found more, they're found along water and streams and that kind of stuff, but I don't think they lived a life that way because of the way their body is shaped. Now, is it possible that that sail functioned as sort of a rudder when they swam through the water? Maybe so. And making that connection between Spinosaurus and, and Adaphosaurus and Dimetrodon might be a valid point. But here's the one catch. What about Uranosaurus, the hadrosaur? He's got that big sail and nothing suggests that Uranosaurus is aquatic. So maybe we don't understand the function of the sail as well as we should. But uh, I understand how you would make that assessment, and I think it's a good thing to do for a beginning. What I suggest you do now is look deeper into these di these dino I almost said dinosaurs again. Look deeper into these animals and find out if they are always found in relationship to water, or if they are found in more arid environments where they're less likely to be amphibians. And I would say that's a good starting point to find out whether your hypothesis is valid or invalid. That's a good way to start. Okay, Paul from Manchester, England. Hi, DG. Thanks for the great uploads. I'm a dino nut. Been interested in them for early childhood and still can't get enough of them. And for, I've been older than 40 years. How are you? Ha <laughs> Paul. I know the feeling, brother. I'm still, I'm still a dino nut. And I'm only one or two or 10 or 14 years older than you. <laughs> Do you have any plans to come to Britain? Man, not in the immediate future, Paul, but I am desperate to want to go. I'll tell you something cool. I sold a bunch of stuff to the Yorkshire Museum uh, back about 30 years ago, and I am dying to come to that museum to see the pieces. Um, I'm just dying to come there and see them. So one of these days I'm going to. All right, what is your favorite herbivorous dinosaur? You know, I got to say... Well, let's see what yours is. My favorites are the sauropods, in particular Diplodocus. Thanks for your time and keep up the great work. Thank you, Paul. Very kind of you. Boy, it's hard. It's always a toss-up for me between the ankylosaurs and the ceratopsians. I, 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 I got to say ankylosaurs probably, for me, are the ones I like the best. I love them. Gastonia in particular. I think he's just a cool-looking little dude. Um, and then with the... Uh, ha with the uh, Ceratopsians, it's Styracosaurus. He's my fave. Now, the giant sauropods, <laughs> you want to know why I can't say they are my favorite? And Paul, this is going to sound absurd. They're too big to get my mind around. <laughs> it sounds absurd, but it's the truth. They're simply too gigantic. I can't get my mind around it. And the more I think about them and how they moved and how they survived and how they ate, it does me, it frustrates, I'm getting frustrated now just talking about it. I get frustrated because they're simply too giant. They, they don't make any sense to me. So even though I understand how you love Diplodocus, all he does is raises my blood pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, it's nice hearing from you, buddy. And maybe if I come to England, I'd love to look you up. All right. Hamid from Muscat, Oman. Hello, sir. Or I think it's Oman Muscat, isn't it? 
Is it Muscat the name of the country? I think so, Hamid. Hello, sir. I hope you're having a great day. My question is, what did Carnotaurus hunt? And, uh, and did you ever get the chance to study this? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. What did Carnotaurus hunt, and did you ever get the chance to study this dinosaur? Thank you for giving us chances to ask you questions. It's really helpful, and I appreciate it. Hamid, thank you. That's very, very kind, and it makes all this time worthwhile for me, uh, knowing that you guys appreciate this. So thank you very much. Okay, Carnotaurus, what did he eat? Man, 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 I don't know who was living with him. I don't know what was in his domain, so I don't know who he was eating. Certainly, he's probably better suited for eating things like hadrosaurs. I, I'm guessing that's probably what he focused on. But Carnotaurus may also have been more scavenging, taking advantage of other kills or finding things that were not going to fight back as much. It's hard to really say about him. Now, I have studied him. As a matter of fact, I've got a, I've got a cool Carnotaurus skull in my collection, big one. I love him. Wicked looking dinosaur, man. That thing looks nasty. Okay, finally, Alex from Patton, Bedfordshire, United Kingdom. Patton? Poten. Patton. Hello, DG. I wanted to ask you, did some dinosaurs migrate long distances like some modern birds? Perhaps dinosaurs like Iguanodon migrated, which could explain why they're found globally. Have a great day. Alex, that's thinking, my man. That's the reason why Iguanodon is dispersed all over the world, because it traveled all over the world, or at least it traveled great distances. I believe migration is a necessity for big animals. Because if big animals spend too much time in one environment, they will simply deplete it of all its resources. They will eat themselves out of existence. So I believe that these giant herds of hadrosaurs and ceratopsians migrated almost constantly. I think they constantly moved north to south, because you couldn't really go east to west that far. So I think they moved north to, north to south. I believe the theropods did not migrate. I think they stayed sort of like the crocodiles do today. They stay and wait for the passing herds to come by. Now, I don't think they traveled in gigantic groups or it's one migration at one time of the year. I think it was nonstop. I think hadrosaurs had their own sense of travel. I think they may have migrated to find nesting areas that were less, um, where they had to deal with less theropods, but I do think they migrated for the sake of not eating themselves out of existence. So yes, I do believe they did. All right, that's it for this one. Thank you guys so much. Have a great day, everybody. Got one more to shoot today. Woohoo! Then we start to go in and edit this madness. I'll see you soon. Bye.